thank you very much. I am thrilled to be here. Um, and I hope at 7 o'clock I'm still as thrilled um, <laughs> as I am right now. Um, I, I, I think I have two strikes against me. Um, uh, one is I, I'm an academic. So I, I'm totally unused to uh, having anybody really care enough about uh, what I do <laughs> to show up to a talk. So this is where, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty edified right now. And the second strike I have against me is that I'm Irish. Um, <laughs> and that, 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 that might be a bigger strike, Carly, actually. Um, and being Irish, of course, you know, you're brought up to... to um, uh, absorb the, 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 the sort of slings and arrows of, um, you know, uh, people's, the, the brickbats of, of criticism and so on. So, you know, in, in all of the, the, the um, uh, attention this book has gotten, and it has got a lot of attention, it's really surprised us. Uh, because we set out to start a conversation about this issue, uh, not because we discovered it, because we didn't, uh, not because uh, we have all the answers, we don't. But we felt strongly enough about it to, to try and start that conversation. But coming back to my Irishness, uh, and my mother, of course, would be proud of me because she browbeat this into me, you know, when you're growing up, she said, oh, don't be getting too big for your boots, you know. And um, so the, the, the one quote that just keeps, you know, flashing on and off in my head, and I can hear it, you know, is a, a piece the Wall Street Journal did a review, and it was quite a good review of the book. But the one phrase is, you know, part of the book, he called it howlingly inaccurate. And it's the thing, one thing that, you know, I wake up in the morning, howlingly inaccurate, Wall Street <laughs> Journal. Um, but, no, more seriously, um, as I said, we're, we're totally unaccustomed to, to having people care about um, our work. So let me just, as we start, share a couple of things with you that uh, have, um, we've received over the last couple of weeks. And these are, are some emails from people uh, who are from towns very like else and who read the book and who felt moved enough to write. So let me, I'm just going to quote a little bit from some of these, these notes. So this first one says, Today has been very weird for me. Uh, I thought you both would like to know why. I got a Facebook message from a friend I graduated with in a small town about a book, Hollowing Out the Middle. As an avid reader, I thought I'd check it out. And it amazed me to, to, to check out the book and watch the little book trailer and see a place just like my hometown. I got to reading the rest of the website and I was very moved by this and you might think big deal. As I'm about 30 now and I live and work in a small town uh, uh, and I see every day how hard it is for people in small towns in Iowa to survive but refuse to leave. My boss is also from a small town and she graduated a few years before me. Collectively, we would like to say thank you for writing this book as we try to explain to friends who have moved away that we are perfectly happy in small town Iowa and are helping to keep it alive. Your book is helping to open the eyes of many people as I found out about the book from one of those friends who just doesn't understand how we can live in such a small rural place. After reading your book, she admits she misses the simplicity of it and should visit her parents more often. Again, thank you for making our lives seem normal and for making small town life available to people at least through your pages. Okay, that was one of them. And another note was from a, a young woman from a small town in western Kansas. And she writes, My name is Sarah Downing and I'm a practicing community planner in Kansas and Missouri. As I was doing some research this morning, I came across an article in your book. I felt compelled to get in touch with you and express my interest in your research and ideas. I am from rural northwest Kansas, Colby sp specifically, and I was raised in a working family farm. My father, mother, myself and two siblings ran the farm, growing wheat, corn, soybeans, sunflowers, and milo. I hope I said that right. Within the last uh, past 10 years or so, many of our farming neighbors have sold or lost their farms, while my father is still operating his farm. I left Colby to go to college where I received a BA in political science and a master's degree in regional and community planning. My master's degree is from Kansas State, where another Rutgers graduate, John Keller, was one of my professors. Being from a rural area and seeing the flight of rural youth continuing and the continuing rapid decline of population, one of my passions is understanding 
uh, rural population decline and the death of these communities. I wrote my master's paper on this topic, fo focusing specifically on the eight far northwest counties in Kansas. Because of the availability and jobs in my field, I came to Kansas City to work and have not been able to advance any of my studies on the topic. I would like to offer my help in any way should the opportunity ever present itself. Rural America is near and dear to my heart, and I would love to com contribute to this field of research. Okay, so these are, are just some of the, the responses that we've received uh, about this book. And um, it's clear that it's touched a, a nerve, and I think that it should, because if we're ever going to have a conversation and really get serious about small town America, then it has to start somewhere. Let me lay out just some of the background to what we see as the issue. Uh, why Ellis matters as what is in many ways a typical small town and what we can sort of do going forward into the future. Uh, between 1980 and 2000, over 800 non-metropolitan counties, just like the one we're in right now, lost 10% or more of their population to out-migration. Now, this is not natural decrease. This is people actually leaving, okay? Between 2000 and 2005, over 800 rural counties um, uh, lost 10% uh, or, or more of their population again. And in those same counties, there were more deaths than births. The median age in these places has also risen pretty dramatically. So that would lead us to conclude that the people that are leaving are young. And in most cases, although we don't have firm data on this, they're mostly educated people. They're leaving for a variety of reasons. Some leave because there are opportunities elsewhere. Some leave because they want to. Um, but the fact of the matter is that many small towns are, in some cases, years away from extinction. And sometimes the final death knell for a town is when there are no longer enough children to keep a local school open. And we've seen in, in many places, too, that schools have had to amalgamate because they just don't have enough kids to keep a school viable. So against the backdrop of this, uh, we began a, a study in this small town of Ellis back in 2002. And uh, do have to pay tribute to the MacArthur Foundation for having the, the foresight and also the largesse to fund a study like this because most foundations don't really care about these issues. Most foundations uh, aren't willing to spend what was, for a study of its type, quite a, a lot of money. And they were interested in something that wasn't rural brain drain and that wasn't the future of small towns. They were interested in how people come of age in a small town. And we chose the town of Ellis because of some of our ties there. We chose it because it was, in many ways, what they wanted, a fairly typical small town that's far away from a big city, that has one school, and so on. And we got in co contact with the school there. They were tremendously helpful. We couldn't have done the research without them. And um, assembled incoming lists of high school freshmen who entered school to graduate in the late 80s and early 90s, with a view to catching up with them in their early and mid-20s and late 20s, so people who should be adults or on their way to adulthood by then. And we found very quickly that coming of age in a small town means that you have to face two pretty fundamental questions. And those two questions are, do I stay or do I go? And the second question is, if I go, do I ever come back? And in many ways, the pathways that these young adults had taken sort of fall along the fault line of those two very fundamental questions. This isn't something that's new. I think this is the question that young people coming of age in towns such as this and Ellis have always faced. But what we found was that what's fundamentally different now is that the economy has changed, that opportunities are different, and that staying or leaving now within the context of that is very different than it was.